He's a peace in your life. You believe that your God is able. Even when fear comes knocking, come on, Kevin, sing it out. Everybody, come on. Come on, can you lift it up in this place? He's worthy of it. Come on, sing it out.
feel God's presence in here today. I'm so glad I love coming to church. You love being in church? <laughs> There's some people here at this campus, and they're like, I'm supposed to be at a Broadway show. This ain't that. <laughs> you can't leave. You're here now. Look at your neighbor right now. I just sat and prayed all day that I would sit next to you. You look fantastic. So glad you're here. All the visitors, new people, you might be checking out our church. We love you. There's a place for you here. Our church is filled with new people all the time. I pray that it always will be. You do not have to believe to belong. You just got to show up. And uh, we pray God speaks to you. Our church is a really simple place. It's a small church with a lot of people. And we believe that Jesus Christ is alive. He can change any soul. And there's room for you. Occupy the park next week. It's going to be awesome. Be excited about it. Don't forget to trick your friends. Trick your friends. Trick them all. I know you won't come to church with me, but I'm trying something new. You want to come to the park Saturday? Just some frisbees, some hot dogs. They're going to be like, hey, you. Yeah, we got you. Church in the park. Can you grab your Bible if you have one? I'm going to just share something that I pray is a blessing to you. And it goes directly along the lines with this unbelievable song. Joel Houston, I believe, is in Irving Plaza right now. It's a great song, Joel. It's phenomenal. Go to the book of 3 John. I'm going to get right to it. Right down to business. Is that all right? Did you enjoy Chad Beach last week? Unbelievable. If you want to write a title down, this is going to be like a preach on the move message. Just going to let it fly. I'm going to pray. Let it fly. Called this message, It Is Well With My Soul. Look at somebody and say, It is well with my soul. How you doing up there in the fancy seats? You guys good? I'm going to read you a passage of scripture. We're actually going to read the whole book of 3 John. Sounds really spiritual until you see that's one page. <laughs> and in this scripture, we see this unbelievable theme where John is writing a letter to an amazing guy who's doing great things and he is known as we're going to see for his love. And the reason why John is sending him this letter is because he wants him to take care of his soul. Not just the outside, not just the surface, but he knows this guy has an epic soul and out of your soul flows all the issues in our lives. And I wonder this morning, ask yourself this, how's your soul? You doing okay? Because it is a question that defines your entire life. And here's this epic letter, okay? This is written from a guy named John to a guy named, I'm going to call him Gaius. Here's how it goes. He says, to my dear friend, whom I love in the truth. He says, I pray that you may enjoy good health and that all may go well with you. Come on, somebody. That's a great prayer. Some Christians believe that some of it's going to go well. Well, our Bible teaches us it's okay to actually believe that it's all going to go well with you. Ready for this? Here's the kicker. Even as your soul is getting along well. So he goes surfacing, then he goes to the soul. I pray that your soul is prospering, because if that's right, your soul is right, your life is right. He says, it gave, it gave me great joy when the believers came and testified about your faithfulness to the truth, telling how you continue to walk in it. I have no greater joy than to hear that my children are walking in the truth. Dear friend, you are faithful in what you do for the brothers and sisters, even though they are strangers to you. Wow, that's amazing. They had told you, they told the church about your love. Please send them on their way in a manner that honors God. It was for the sake of the name that we went out receiving no help from the pagans. We ought therefore show hospitality to such people that we may work together for the truth. I wrote to the church, but Diotrephes, bummer if that's your name. If that's on your Facebook profile, nobody's clicking. Who loves to be first will not welcome us. So when I come home, I'm going to call attention to what he's doing, spreading malicious nonsense about us. Not satisfied with that, he even refuses to welcome other believers. He also stops those who want to do so and puts them out of the church. This was a bad dude. Dear friend, do not imitate what is evil. Do not imitate what you see in Manhattan. Do not imitate what you see at your workplace. Do not imitate what the world is doing. But imitate what is good. Anybody who does... What is good is from God. Anybody who does what is evil has not seen God. 
Demetrius is well spoken by everybody, and even the truth itself. We also speak well of him, and you know that our testimony is true. I have much to write to you, but I don't want to do that with pen and ink. I hope to see you soon where we can talk face to face. Look at somebody one more time and say, it is well with my soul. We see a guy who's got a healthy soul, and the rest of the letter is about this guy whose soul is right, and so now he's known for his love, and he's known for his flamboyant ability to help people. This is our prayer, is that they might know us by our love. Is your soul healthy this morning? I've been yelling at our staff all week about it, talked to the kingdom people about it on Thursday night, and I'm bringing it here to the big house Sunday morning. Have you ever been so tired in life where you can't get any rest? Where you're just so sick and tired of running around that you can't stop running around? Where you haven't slept in so long that you can't sleep? Where you have kind of everything going right seemingly, but for whatever reason you just can't actually find peace where your soul gets some rest? Anybody been there? Yeah, if you live in New York, raise your hand. It's also called renting. Do we have any homeowners here right now? It's quick loading. <laughs> Renting is a journey my wife and I have, have been on, you know, sporadically throughout our lives. Sometimes we've got a place, other places where we've rented. I remember a time when we were renting a house, and you know, renting means it's yours, but it's not really yours. Okay. And there was one period where we were renting a place, but the people that we were renting it from were selling the place, so we had to always stay ready to show the house. Meaning people you do not know are going to come in the house that you're renting and you have to pretend that your house is awesome and it's completely put together and you don't have children and you're always on an audition. Anybody lives through this fantastic moment. So even when you're on your couch with your feet up, they're not really up because you might have to hide your shoes at any moment. Anytime you see your kid eating, you're like, is are they going to drop it on the carpet? Could it cost somebody else money? Let me just make sure we don't do it. You're hiding your kids in closets, and then you might come home one day and kick your shoes off and want to relax. There's somebody you don't know, like, in your bedroom. Has anybody lived through the open house? How? Where it's yours, but it's not yours. Where you feel like you can let your guard down, but you can't let it down. Where you have something you thought was yours, but it's still not giving you the peace that you want. When I think about our city, and when I think about our world outside the love of God, this is what it's like to have no peace for your soul. Where you've got all the stuff that this world tells you that you need, but there's still no peace in your soul. Where you're doing all the stuff you think you're supposed to do, but there is no peace for your soul. Enter the cross on Calvary. Because the moment Jesus showed up, he is the only person ever to offer the kind of peace where it can be wrong with your life, but still well with your soul. Where the stuff can be shaky all around you, but you have this hope and this passion and this peace that is attached to Jesus, so it is still well with your soul. Where the job can go wrong, but it's still well with your soul. Where your single profile might remain, but it is still well with your soul. My prayer in my own life is that I would take conscious inventory of my soul because I don't want to get to that point where I'm just running and I'm running and I'm running and I get done with this life and someone says, yeah, you got this stuff, but how's your soul? If you are a Christian in here today or in Montclair, Jersey, or in Urban Plaza, I want to ask you, how's your soul? Because you've got a garden, you've got to build it, and you've got to place it at the cross day in and day out to make sure that it is still well with your soul. Can someone give me one Pentecostal shout as we get rolling on the road some more? Here's the thing, we're going to keep it real, I'm going to turn it. But we cannot avoid our souls. We have to allow God to redeem them. Cannot avoid our soul. We have to allow Jesus. That's what redemption is, to redeem. We have people that are avoiding the state of their soul. Most people uh, look for different places to find peace, because that's what happens when you find out you don't have any peace and you don't know how to fix it, you start avoiding it. Some people turn to drugs. I can't find peace. I need to break away from reality, so they turn to drugs. Problem is you can't stay high all the time in New York. So there will come a day where your soul is exposed again. Then what do you do? There's other people that try to find that 
fill that space in their empty soul with relationships. But the problem is you can't fill a divine need with a human person. So they're empty. Again, other people will go on vacation to get rest for their souls. Who has ever came back from vacation more tired than you went? Because here's the problem. You cannot take a vacation from you. Wherever you go, there you are. So we have people going around looking for this peace. And it's like, hey, I got news for you, New York City. You're only going to find this in Jesus. I just want to read you Hebrews real quick before I just throw some thoughts at you. Hebrews chapter 6. How's your soul? Your soul. What's my soul? Your soul is your, ugh. I've heard it, you know, defined real fancy. That's my whole song. You know, I see definition of your soul. It's your, It's you. And here's where our hope is today. You ready for this? It says Hebrews 6, 19. And here's our promise. It says, we have this hope that is an anchor for the soul. Firm and secure, it enters the inner sanctuary behind the curtain where our forerunner Jesus has entered on our behalf. This is awesome. We break this down for you before I just give you some takeaway points today. We have the right to pin our hope, hope of our soul, on the promises of God. Why this is unbelievable? Because typically anchors go down. This is an anchor that shoots straight through the heavens. So no matter what happens on this earth, my soul no longer wanders. My soul no longer has to be in one. You can take everything I got and it's still going to be well with my soul because my hope is attached to something far greater. Come on, somebody. you got to get back to the most attractive thing about Christians being their soul. You know what was so explosive about the early church? There was no Twitter. There was no Facebook. There was no skywriting. There was no cool cross equals love promotion. There was no Occupy the Park. The early church was not known for its possessions. It was not known for the stature of its people. The early church was explosive because of the state of people's souls. They were dying, but they still had peace. They were surrounded by poverty, but their souls were still wealthy. Who wants to see New York City turn upside down with a revival that shakes the world? I do. So I don't want to focus on what's in my driveway or what's in my bank account. I want to focus on what's in my soul. Because if that's right, maybe some other stuff will follow, but that's the thing nobody else has. So if I can get my soul healthy, I want to get a letter like that from somebody. Hey, you're doing great. I pray that your life prospers. But more than that, I pray your soul continues to prosper. Anybody with me on that? Look at your neighbor. Look deep in their eyes. See if their soul is prospering. No, I'm just kidding. You can't do that. Can I give you real quick three things that happen when our souls are healthy? If these three things are not happening today, it's a great Sunday for you. Because you're going to leave here and go, wow, there's more for me. Maybe this fear isn't a part of my life anymore. Maybe this condemnation, maybe I don't have to live like that anymore. I'm going to give you three things that happen when a Christian has a healthy soul. You ready? I've got 33. Want to keep going all day? No. Joel? Irving? No. Number one, when our souls are healthy, Kevin Singleton, Black Velvet. Yes, Pastor White. <laughs> we change the environment. The environment does not change us. Somebody else preach. You gotta preach, I preach, I can preach. When your soul is healthy, you change the environment. And the environment does not change you. Guys, this guy who got the letter, why I love this is because John is reminding him you are doing things nobody else is doing. You're hospitable. And you're giving food to people that typically don't give food. And he immediately warns him later in the letter, watch out for this guy because he is a chump and I don't want him to change you. That is a red alert wake up call for people in New York City because if you do not have an anchored soul that is healthy and prospering, it's going to be really tough to walk into this city. If you don't know who you are, this city is going to tell you who you are. And when a Christian has a healthy soul, they're not being influenced by the culture. They're actually being a light in the culture. The culture's not changing them. They're changing the culture. I told our staff, I said, I don't want to go into my world with a clean slate. Meaning, I want my soul to be so filled and so attached and so complete in God that when I walk into my world, you can't write on my slate that is my soul. 
There's so many people who walk in with an empty soul slate because they haven't prayed, they haven't talked to Jesus, they're not in a community, and they don't have any sort of relationship that ebbs and flows with the Lord. So they walk into their work week and their soul slate is wide open. So if someone's negative, they can write on If someone wants to speak a doomsday report, go Fox News, thanks. That wouldn't even be political. Fox News just came out. If somebody wants to bring you down, you have room. I want to have such a healthy soul that is so in love with Jesus, so wrapped up in the promises of my God that there's just no room. You want to tell me something bad? Got no room. You want to bring me down? I got no room. Something's going to give here and it's not going to be my soul. So you might as well let me get into what you got because I've got no room at the end. My soul is complete in Jesus. Some of you single people... You don't want to go into a relationship with an open soul. You want to go into a relationship with, I know who I am. I'm complete. I don't need you to complete me. Jesus completes me. I'm good. You need to add to me. Where's the add on? You don't want to happen in a society like this that we are trying to change with every bit of who we are as a church. You do not want to catch yourself as a Christian acclimating to the dysfunction around you. That's the day. Can you write that down? Have I acclimated to the dysfunction around me? There are a lot of people who don't realize that God can heal your heart, mend your heart, make it well with your soul. So when you go into your world, the dysfunction around you no longer reflects you. No longer has a home and you have been around so many people where they don't even recognize what's unhealthy in their marriage anymore because it's been dysfunctional for so long. They don't even recognize how bad the radio is because they've been listening to it for so long. They don't even recognize what toxic speech is anymore because that's all they've ever known. Is there anything in your life where your soul has been hurt or shattered and rather than letting the healer heal, you've started to acclimate to that dysfunction and to become a part of your soul structure? Can I go there this early? One of my best friends one time was sitting down and we were about to go play basketball. This is in Illinois, some conference we were hanging out at, and we're sitting there tying up our shoes, and uh, my friend's dad walks in, and he goes, hey Carl, how you doing? Doing good, sir. He's like, hey son, you're looking fat again. You might want to lay off the bread. And he walks out of the room. I looked at him, I'm like, bro, are you okay? He's like, ah, yeah, that's just my dad. He's like, that's not a kid. Keeps tying his shoes, and I'm like, my heart's fluttering. I grew up in a house with the greatest dad in the world. Like, my dad's the all time greatest encourager. Like, if I committed a felony, he'd be like, good felony, son. You know? <laughs> hey, you're gonna do it, do it right, love you, son. Like, he was that dad. So I'm like, you know that it's not normal for people to say mean things like that to you? He's like, ah, oh, really? You know, I just, that's always I had the way it was in my house. Going, no! Do you talk to your kids like that? Like, is that how it is in your house? Because that is not normal. He had been around sickness for so long that now that was the state of his soul. What if this morning you said, God, can you show me some areas that I have accepted this world when the kingdom culture gives me the right to change this world? It's not okay. There's some things that should not be okay with your soul. It is not well with your soul. It should be. But I believe this morning you can leave church and say, Lord, show me my marriage in a, in a solid Holy Spirit mirror. Show me my identity in a Holy Spirit mirror. Is there any areas that maybe this isn't healthy? Some of y'all need to go ask somebody. Is this healthy? Make sure that person's healthy and be prepared for the answer that you hear. Healthy souls change the environment. The environment doesn't change them. Can somebody say amen? amen. Number two, let help anybody. Is it convicted? Healthy souls, when they're really healthy, when it's well with your soul, we give the benefit of the doubt to God. Unhealthy souls are waiting to get wounded. Oh, the church. Healthy souls give the benefit of the doubt to God Almighty. Unhealthy, sick souls are waiting to get wounded. This is why this matters if you live in this city and you're part of this church. I wonder, is your soul well to the point where everything in you leans to the supernatural, leans to the presence of God? I wonder when you are faced with challenge, what is the first thing that rises up in your spirit? Which way do you lean? Do you lean on the fact that God's going to come through? 
Or do you lean into the fact that it might not work out and it might go bad? I want to be a Christian that's soul is so healthy where I wake up every day of my life expecting God to move because I know He's going to move. Expecting God to give breakthrough because He is a breakthrough God. I want to have such a healthy soul that I'm able to see in every situation that God is actually in every situation because He never leaves me, He never forsakes me. That means in every situation I can have joy. I want to give the benefit of the doubt to my God. I wonder if there's anybody in here today that can't say that. Somebody wakes up on Monday and they're a Christian, but their soul isn't healthy. And so you just thought it was normal to wake up and go, man, this week looks kind of scary. I wonder if it's going to work out. Literally waiting to be wounded. Man, the, the wind's blowing a funny way. My allergies are acting up. My arms are knees clicking again. Bad things happen at night. I mean, the whole thing's going down real quickly. I broke a mirror, walked under a ladder. What's next? It's funny as it is, you know how many Christians live like this? But guess what happens when you expect to get wounded? You normally do. There's people who walk into church. They're not expecting church to be awesome. They're waiting to get wounded. I wonder who's going to know me today. I'm going to go to church. It's probably going to be like the last experience I have. I wonder who's going to know my name. Let me just see how many people don't know my name. Let me just expect something to go wrong. It's amazing in this life. Whatever you get out, normally you're going to kind of feel in your soul. Imagine as a church if we flipped it and we had an army of people that were giving God the benefit of the doubt. Where every time the devil tries to bring confusion, you bring clarity. What if it does work out? What if God does move? What if my dreams do come to fruition? What if God does show up? My soul is so healthy that I'm still shocked by negative news. Don't you love that? There's some people who are like, I expected that. It's a matter of time. I want to be the guy who everybody makes fun of because outside of the kingdom of God, they call us optimists. Inside the kingdom of God, we just say we have a healthy soul. I want to be shocked. I want to be shocked by negative news. Shocked when it didn't work out. I understand that some things in this life, the Bible says, it's going to happen. There will be trouble and there will be drama, but take heart. I've overcome the world. I want to be that Christian. It's just like it didn't work out. Like, I'm still shocked when I find out people don't like me. I know it's going to happen, but it's still like I really love people and I think that people are awesome. So when I find out someone doesn't like me, I think I really stay. It's like, it gets me right there. How could you not like me? I want to stay like that because it means my soul is healthy because I'm expecting this to go well. Like, I am still shocked when people leave our church. I mean, they should be leaving. A healthy soul church, people will come and people will go. But I still want to be shocked every time I hear that somebody goes because I think our church is for everybody. What do you mean that not everyone likes what we do? Although, obviously, I understand that's impossible. I want to live on the edge of my spiritual seat going, this is going to be awesome. We're going to be friends. This is going to be great. God is going to like, perform a miracle here. Unhealthy soul, Central Park. It might rain. <laughs> Healthy soul. My umbrella is awesome. Unhealthy soul. I mean, I mean am I going to stand the whole time in Central Park? Healthy soul, I cannot wait to see who God brings in when we have church in the park. <laughs> service only. Can you be conscious of the theme of your heart? Because it will quickly become the theme of your life. What's the theme of your soul this morning? The theme of your heart. I told our staff, I said, if your soul was a radio station, what kind of music would it play all the time? If we were to click your soul into the speakers right now, what kind of station would we get? Because some people, they're like a Top 40. Like, if I go on a country station, I don't want to hear hip hop. I want to hear some country all day, every day. If we're going to go to love songs, I want to hear love songs all day, every day. Some Christians have such an inconsistent theme in their soul that if your, sta if your station, if your radio soul station was played, we'd never know what we were going to get. I wonder if you could take inventory right now and say, Lord, what's the theme of my soul? 
What do I mean by that? When you wake up, what's running through your heart? Is it hope? Is it joy? Is it peace? Is it like this guy that got the letter where he is known for your love? You're known for your happy spirit. You're known for your faith. You're known for your compassion. Where people look at you and like, you're a follower of Jesus, aren't you? Because everywhere you go, everything you do, it reflects what you preach. And wow, that's the thing. You know, the alternative, alternative is a wandering soul. Thank God we have an anchor that doesn't allow us to have a wandering soul. This world is like, yeah, let your soul be free. I don't want my soul to be free. Just let your soul go where it wants. I know where my soul is going without Jesus. And it is away from the things of God. That's why I want to say, Lord, I give you my heart and I give you my soul. Have your way in my life. I don't want to let my soul wander. You know why? Without Jesus, we have a propensity as humans to wander towards the wrong thing. Thank God. Some of you need to take a praise break. Thank God he stopped you from wandering where you thought you wanted to go. Yeah. You wanted to be the people you thought you wanted to be with. Thank God we are not in charge of our hearts any longer. You know, the other day I was, I had like one itch on my shin. And so I just Googled itch on my shin. And it opened up a Pandora's box. And I'm like, wow, maybe, maybe it is. Next picture, next doctor blog. Next picture, and I'm like, oh my gosh, it went from being like an itch on my shin. I'm like, Laura, I call I'm like, Laura, I think I have like West Nile shin virus. Like, this might kill me. Like, I got to go blind later. Like, I wanted to rush myself to the hospital. Like, I ended up going to an emergency doctor the next day. And I'm like, man, I've got this thing on my shin. She's like, yeah, it's like a bug bite. I'm like, no, it's not a bug bite. Because I Googled it, and my leg could fall off at any time. She's like, never get on Google. This is what life is like without Jesus. When you find yourself in a situation thinking it's so bad, you're like, why did we even go there? Lord, I want to follow you. Thank God we are not led by our little human desire and our little soul wanderings. I want to be led by the power of God. I want to be led by the purity that is the Holy Spirit. Thank God that we can have a soul that is well because it's attached to a perfect God. Not our sinful life. Come on, somebody. Shall we do it with me? Oh, well, that helps somebody in here. I, I've taught people that I love. If we're talking about how to make sure you're living with a healthy soul, tell this yourself. Like when you're faced with something crazy, it's definitely not as bad as I think it is. And God is definitely doing more than I think he is. Practice that on my bed. When you're stuck in traffic, it's definitely not that bad. You open up the financial statement this week. It's definitely not as bad as I think it is. I know it looks bad, but thank God I'm not like anybody else doesn't know Jesus. I'm attached to this thing. I'm attached to him. My hope is in him. It's firm. It's secure. It reaches behind the veil. God is going to be all right. He's going to get me through this. Thank God. Number one, healthy souls change the environment. Number two, healthy souls give the benefit of the doubt to God. And number three, healthy souls... They get help when they're hurting. Unhealthy souls try to do it alone. That's a painful process. Come on up here, team. Healthy souls, truly healthy souls, they get help when they're hurting. Unhealthy souls try to do it by themselves. If you read the commentary of 3 John, the church is pretty amazing because you find out that when John sent this letter, even the guy that carried the letter was a legend. Not only did he want to send this awesome, hospitable, known by his love, epic leader in the church a letter, but even the one that carried the letter was known as an encourager. Look at how strong you are, and how spiritual you might be. If you're really healthy, you're going to need to get help when you are hurting. We have destroyed this concept in church. Maybe some of y'all have grown up in a church culture where you had to literally hide all the drama. I've called it for years, Twitter church. Show your best, hide the rest. So we've now developed this negative mindset towards anybody needing help is now needy. I like to tell people, if you need help, it actually means you're healthy. In fact, the more healthy you 
are, sometimes the more needy you become because you realize the depravity of your own soul and how much you need Jesus. So if you are really healthy, you should be needing help in your marriage. You should be needing help in your prayer life. You should be needing help to figure out how this Bible is convicting you like it's convicting you. Healthy souls get help when you're hurting. There's so many New Yorkers who refuse to get help. They could be bleeding and dragging their leg. And you're like, dude, you're dragging your leg. No, I'm not. That's how I walk. I'm on the wrong side. No, you're not okay. I'm fine. Not fine. One of my favorite questions that my best friend asked me. Are we okay? So we got like a crying eye and I cry. And we work it out. I'm like, thank God I'm healthy. Thank God I can get to a point where I gotta put my hand up and get some help. Hear this loud and clear church. When your soul's really healthy, you should feel what's not healthy really quickly. And that's okay. That's why we have connect groups. That's why we have exchange. That's why we have as much as we can possibly offer as a church for people to say, hey, there's something going on in my soul. Can you help me out with it? Remember hanging out with a, a guy who was really passionate about keeping his body healthy. He's an athlete, and he'd never put anything bad in his body. We were in Australia, and I'm a good influencer. I'm like, you've never had like an espresso before? He's like, never. Never had any caffeine in the world. I'm like, today is your day. <laughs> You've got seven foot two. Never put anything that's not like a perfectly healthy thing in his body. I'm like, here's a quadruple shot. It's going to be fine. You're going to be good. Took this shot within like 10 minutes. He's like, nothing really wrong with me. I'm good. <laughs> Twitching. And he's like, and he just disappeared for like the next five hours. Told me he had cold chills. Had to take a nap. This is great. The worst friend ever. Like, this is awesome. You shouldn't have it. His body had never known anything other than hell. So the moment that something hit it that wasn't right, it really affected him. This should be happening to you day in and day out as a Christian. There should be things where you're like, Lord, here I am again. Guess what our need does? Uh, it brings us back to the cross. When your soul is really healthy, it's not like, God, I got it, I'm good. I got this all worked out. Every day of your life, if you're really healthy, you know what you should land? Back at the cross because you realize, oh, Because there's going to come a storm at some point in your life. 
that's going to try to rob you of your health, of your soul. It's going to try to rob you of your peace. And in these moments, you've got to be able to say, my soul is well because I'm walking with Jesus. It's not going to be my soul as well because I go to Hillsong Church. Not going to cut it filled with people. My soul is well. I'm in the middle of this storm because I have money. Not going to cut it. I can take your money. My soul is well because I know the right people now. You're going to have to say my soul is well because I walk with Jesus. Don't ever forget that Jesus never promised freedom from the storm, but he only promised peace right in the middle of it. We're going to close this right now. But I'm going to leave you with, you ever heard that old song, It Is Well With My Soul? Early 1900s, you know who wrote this song? It was a man who had lost everything in the early economic upheaval of the 19th century. Lost everything, put his four daughters and his wife on a boat to cross the Atlantic. To try to go find some new hope, new life, and he was going to meet him later. Got a letter not long after that that there was a horrible shipwreck. All four of his daughters drowned in the Atlantic and only his wife survived. On the way back over, as he was going to meet his grieving wife, he says it was in that moment when they said, this is the spot that you lost everything. All four of your daughters, I couldn't even imagine. This is the spot. He said right then and there, he started to pray. And that's the song that the Holy Spirit put in his heart. It is well with my soul. It was wrong with his life. It was wrong in the moment. And it was wrong all around him. But God shows up and reminds him it is still well with your soul. Because I can hear the storm that changed the Savior. Christ is the change the cross. I'm going to pray this morning. If you're in here, you hear me loud and clear. You are offered something better. Temporary happiness. You are offered something better. Let it be said of you, it is well with my soul. Can you bow your head for a moment? Whoever's over there at Irving's will take this, and Montclair, Matty Marcus, and the crew will take it there. But before we worship our way through this, I'm going to ask the church if you don't know Jesus, before I pray for those that do, hear me loud and clear. You can't fix your life and get peace and then come to Jesus. If you walked in here and you're like, yeah, I got some stuff I got to work out. I don't have peace. I don't have anything that happened in my life. I want to go figure it out and come back. No, Jesus said, come to me right now. Those that are weary and burned out on stop, and I will give you rest for your soul. We like to call that salvation. It's when you trade in the sin and the shame of your life and the consequences that you deserve because of it. And you accept the grace and the peace and the love of our God, which is freely given to those that ask. So I'm going to count to three right now. If you're in this room and your soul is not secure, if you were to die tonight and stand face to face with our almighty God, you have no idea where you spend eternity. You can leave here and someday my soul, it'll be well with my God in heaven. Not because of the good stuff I did, but because I accepted the one thing he did on that cross and his grace and his mercy set me free. If your soul has wandered in here and at one time we were walking with God, but today you realize I've wandered too far. God, I want to give you my soul. I want to start fresh. I want to walk back to you. When I say three, I want you to lift your hand. I'm going to pray. For anybody that lifts their hand today that the Savior of the world is going to take over. Clean slate, fresh start, brand new soul that belongs to God, you will never be the same. If you need Jesus, I want you to shoot your hand up. If you're ready to say, Lord, here I am, I've got nothing with that to save my life, but I say three, lift your hand, it all changes for you. You ready? One, Jesus loves you. He died and rose again so you can have life. Two, the Bible says right now is the time for salvation. Do not wait another day. Three, lift your hand, blow this way, shoot it up high. Keep it up just for a moment. Put it down, church. We stand to our feet. Can we give the man? What a great morning. We're going to pray. Thank you. We're going to pray right now. For anybody who lifted your hands, this is the best day of your life. Life. 
just bow your head and say this with me. If you lifted your hand especially, say this with me. Say, Jesus, here I am. I need you. I need your help. I am a sinner. And I need your forgiveness. And today I choose to follow you. By your grace, I am saved. By your power, I am set free. It is a new day. In Jesus' name, amen. Wednesday night, if you're free at 